The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews The hottest be coming through, dropping knowledge on all that you get A pick up the front of you with the truth that they offer you, yeah Hands up, we doing it for the culture To give artists and businesses more exposure Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder It's about to go all the way down, can't get no lower Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower But if I stay running, I promise they getting closer More over success, my older And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like vultures I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll Well, we'll be on the whole different vibe though We like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted So you really can see us like Stevie Wonder Waking up with his eyes closed, yeah Got the kind of flow that rock the boat On my 16s of pounds of dough And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic Then grab some rope Matter of fact, better grab some hope While you at it We keep it live, it's time to tune in Turn up the sound on what you're using it goes so hard, I think it's bruising The show is 2020, no need to zoom in yeah. Hey yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast LLC Please say the LLC, I work hard for that shit Anyway, today, uh, you already know what it is You know we love wrestling here at 2020 And you know we like to highlight our black compatriots in the industry So today... I managed to get a stable in this bit. We got Culture Inc. Okay. in the building, the future evolution okay. of wrestling. Culture F and Inc. You see the merch? God damn you it. see the merch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, first things first, uh, I like to give out flowers before we get started. I want to tell each of you, thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. Uh, Nick did let me know that you guys are doing some tapings today. So like I said, I'm going to make this brief. And if you guys want to keep talking, that's up to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want to interrupt your time. So first things first, uh, it's funny that you guys are sitting in the way that I got you guys listed. (laughs) So I got Eli Knight, Nick Holiday, and Malik Bosidi. And uh, we in this thing, bro. We about to get this thing cracking. So first things first, in this name, I love it, first of all. But I want to know, how did you guys come up with this name, Culture Epic? Mm, all right. So, backstory. We came together at a um, school in Orlando. We was looking for a name for all three of us to be associated with. Obviously, you look at us, us three, and what the first thing you see is is black excellence, black culture. So, with that being said, why not use culture? But at the same time, let's not use culture by itself. You type mm. in culture by itself, everything pops up. All types of different things pop up. You're not going to necessarily see just us. So. How can what can we add to culture to make it so, so we can stand out when you're looking us up on social media? With um, with that being said, now if you type in on YouTube, you put in Culture Inc. Or if you on Google, you type in Culture Inc. First thing that pops up is us three: Eli Knight, Nick J. Holiday, Malik Bo City. Changing the culture of professional wrestling, one promotion at a time. Hey, I love that excellent promo you cut there, bro. I like that. I like <laughs> Appreciate that. it. <laughs> All Appreciate right. It. So you guys look fairly young, man, and we already know black don't crack. So yeah. starting with Eli, how long have you guys been in the, the industry? How long have you been in the business? I've been in the business for about uh, two and a half years. I started in uh, April 2018. He started in uh, March. Yeah, March. March. So literally a month apart from each other. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so he started. He, he, uh, I'll let him explain it you know, if he wants to say his age. But – <laughs> no, I started. At, I'm, I'm old enough. That's it, bro. I, I keep on going. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like you said, black don't crack. Just don't like, know. just like it says in the slogan, coaching it features three different yeah, yeah. generations yeah. of wrestling. He's gonna just get the yeah. food quick, but okay. the beauty thing about our, our faction is it, it features three different generations of wrestling. Malik being first, first me being the second generation. And then the youngest Eli being the third generation, so we, we got we got everything all the basics covered as far as that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so they just getting the food real quick. So good. So yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, question with you um, was was that like uh, a benefit for you guys with you guys being able to draw from information from three distinct generations? How do you guys manage to mesh that into like a cohesive unit? Because I've watched a lot of your highlights over the past okay. week, and I, I like the way you guys move. Um, my key thing is chemistry. 
chemistry yes. when you have to tell a story with your bodies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what you guys are. You guys are storytellers. But how do you guys, because I know it doesn't come overnight. There has to be some chemistry and camaraderie outside of the business. So how did you guys manage to, hey, you're in this generation, I'm in this generation, this is the baby, kind of like you did <laughs> earlier, yeah. with Eli. So how did you guys manage to make it mesh? Yeah. All right, so um, how it meshed it, it was just, like you said, it wasn't overnight. It actually is uh, always a work in progress because of the generational gap we have. But it's not, it's, I'm not going to say that in a negative tone. It's actually very beneficial, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I have my years of wisdom and knowledge and how things are and that work. And he has his youth and, you know, his, his, his fire, you know what I'm saying. And then with the middle also, the big dude always puts together and then his ideas also, like, it just works from a generational standpoint. I love it. I love it. I like the fact that you guys, you guys seem like brothers. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times, you know, people, you can tell they just work together, but you guys genuinely, even the way you sit, because a lot of times when people don't really know each other, they try to have like that personal space, you know what I'm yeah. saying, in between, but y'all are like, ah, bro, keep my brother, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, man. So when it, when, it, when it first started, when we first um, started getting shows, getting booked together as a coach, a, as a cohesive unit, um, it took some time, but little things, man, like um, we all lived in the same area. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Central Florida and Orlando, I want to say I was I was down the street from Malik. And then, um, oh, glasses, glasses. Okay. Then I want to say um, Eli uh, was right down the street as well. I want to say maybe 12, 15 minutes down the street from us, not too far. Uh-huh. So um, with us being all in the same area, we were able to meet up to train, we were able to meet up to eat the weight room, we were able to meet up to do promos, we were able to meet up and just bond, you know what I'm saying? Just a little thing, so it all goes a long way. Hey, okay, I love it. That is the convenience of being down the street, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people are com- from completely different backgrounds and different areas and having to uh, overcome that, you know what I'm saying? There can be a barrier a community sometimes that we have to overcome to achieve that brotherhood. So that's a benefit to you guys that you're able to do so, especially with three distinct different generations. That's amazing. Yeah. That's that's really dope. That's really dope. Exactly. My apologies. You're fine, bro. Look, I I already said you guys are eating. Look, I understood. Yeah. All right. So my next question. So with being a unit, with getting to this point, obviously there are obstacles. What are some of the obstacles you guys encountered along this route of being a black stable, you know, getting in on the business? Shout out to future evolution of wrestling. Like, how did you, yeah. what did you guys come across that you had to, you know, really battle with? So I'm going to say this is one, this is, I don't know about them, but for me, um, for me, I, I like to dictate our image. I like to put an image out that we're just not, uh, I want to say just like gangsters. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to put out the image that we are. So I don't want to put the image out that we're just thugs and gangsters, three brothers from the hood type thing, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, <laughs> right. Trying to put on for the culture, you feel me? But with three, with three, like I said, three uh, different generations of men, grown men that are well-respected, well-mannered, um, well-respected um, uh, brothers in, the, in our culture. You know what I'm saying? We're not we're not about like the hood life, the street life, you know what I'm saying, and all this other stuff. We just three well brought up young men from um, both from Central Florida and one from Houston, Texas. And we're just trying to put it on for our families in the most respectable way that we can on uh, any broadcast or promotion that we're on. See, I like that. I, I I really feel that overcoming stereotypes because it's easy to be the angry black guy. And yes. unfortunately, we've seen a lot of that in wrestling. You know mm. what I'm saying? The thing about wrestling is it's a chance to escape from the reality of things, but with a hint of reality to the point where it's believable. And with yeah. you guys trying to transcend that, being that, hey, we're still upstanding, but we'll still mess you up. <laughs> I yeah. like that mess, you know? I, I like For that sure. mess. Okay, 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 For okay. Sure. So this next question... I really think it's going to be kind of interesting because it's three of you. This is typically a question I ask one person. So we're going to start with Malik on this one. It'll work our way down to uh, Eli. So Malik, 
how do you manage to balance, you know, being a wrestler and your personal life? I don't. I'm going to ask that question. <laughs> I just um, I just go with it. It's, well, I'm I'm mainly wrestling focused. I do have my personal life. Um, but you know, what I'm involved with, and you know, I have my company as well. You know, and I also do work. But when it comes to wrestling, it's kind of like a that's a first, like that's the career. You know, what I'm saying, and and a way for me is like. I, I'm going to be successful and good no matter what happens, inside or outside of wrestling. Mm -hmm. But I choose wrestling to be the place I'm successful at, so I know there's some sacrifices. So I, I allocate my time a little bit more to wrestling, but still keep a good eye on my personal life because, you know, if you, if you, do, one, if you, do, if you do too much of one, you know, and if the other one ends up altering, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but so, so yes, I I, I do have a plan and um, I do balance. But this time, I'll just be like, hey, you know, just rest and rest, and I'll get back to the to the um, to the personal life in a second. <laughs> Type. If it answer the question, yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. That's okay. fair. That's fair. All right, Nick, what about you, bro? Uh, shoot, the beauty thing about my persona, Nick J. Holiday, that's just, that's me 24-7. That's me, uh, <laughs> that's me when I'm at the house. That's me when I'm hosting events outside of uh, coaching obligations. That's me when I'm with my family. That's me when I'm with, at church. That's me when I'm, you know what I'm saying, just at the park. You know what I'm saying? The, and that's ultimately one of the main things what made these two extremely athletic brothers uh, reach out to me to be a uh, really a mouthpiece for this, this stable was my persona, my, my charisma, my personality that I'm showcasing at the gym. I'm at training with them. Stuff. I'm, I'm showcasing it 24 seven. That's what ultimately had made me uh, get the invite to be in this, in this faction. That is. All right, Eli, you the baby, bro. You gonna have to come with it. So what about yeah. you, bro? <laughs> so right, for one second before we do that, we're gonna do a shot o'clock to to doing this interview with you, my brother. Oh, pre I wish I had something to drink with y'all, man. All right, man. hey, yeah, I'm going to pretend. Shot o'clock, though. Shot o'clock. Hey, shot o'clock. For the oh, culture. Man. For the culture. For the culture. Salute, salute, salute. Right. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's it's keeping coffee. Oh, you got to be the baby. <laughs> be the baby. <laughs> I ain't going to play with it. <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. go. We don't waste around here now. So, no. Thank you. For the culture. For the culture. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my personal life. Uh, so it's like it's it's something like you had to like just like you know you're gonna be busy doing all this stuff. Like, you know we have to travel to Miami today, three hours. Honestly, my homework I I do call it so my homework was due yesterday. I did not start at all. Uh, <laughs> what? FedEx. I have I just started a new job at FedEx. I work Monday through Friday. I skipped two days just for wrestling. I'm like, like it's little stuff like that. You have to. It's hard to find that balance. Mm -hmm. But if you want to achieve something that you really want to do, you have to make sacrifices. For that. Oh, key yeah. word, key word, young man, key word, okay. sacrifice. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. So I sacrificed, like you know, making some money at FedEx for trying to get a really good match at a show, which I did have a pretty decent match at this. Uh, this upcoming taping that could be on, I think it's in January. That will air yeah. on Fight Never Lose Your Wrestling January of 2021. Stay woke for that. All right. Um, I, I, like, I had to make those sacrifices to just achieve what I want to achieve, which is make this my life and hopefully do it with these two. So, we're sure. Uh -huh. Duly noted. We are, that's one thing about this group. And I'm glad, like you just said that, at such a young age, you just heard him demonstrate the, the meaning of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. All of us, all three of us, we, we sacrifice for this business because we extremely love it. And we ultimately see ourselves making a future in this business down the road, putting food on the, on the, on the table for our families and traveling the world and making sure they're cared for, our kids are cared for, and the generation after our, our kids is cared for. You know what I'm saying? It all begins right here. It all begins with the foundation that culture heat builds in the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, it is. All right. Hell of a motto and statement. That bio. Right. That bio. <laughs> right. 
Right. All right. So my next question, and we're going to go from Eli to Malik. So, so no, far, so far right. has there been a memory within the business that you were like, you know what, this is why I do it. You know, mm -hmm. has there been one memory so far that stood out to you and it's like, yes, this is the one that I'm going to hold on to? I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I could say it was like something when I was a kid, but I, when I was a kid, I just loved yeah. wrestling. I didn't really like have like super like instant memories of like what I watched. I do remember, I think it was a uh, December to December. Yeah, ECW. 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 Yeah, I think it was Cena in the women's chair, and it was uh, he was in that. Right? No, he wasn't. He wasn't on ECW. Which I think it was uh, elimination chair. And so if it was elimination chamber and Cena was in it, it was in 2006. And it was on season with New Year's Revolution. New Year's Revolution. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what Edge got in. Yeah. Okay, so it was that. I remember that. I remember jumping on the couch. I'm like, oh my god, it's John Cena. <laughs> John Cena's cussing and shit, and it's like. My mom's like, man, get this shit off the TV. You got some John Cena. I'm like, oh. <laughs> man, I love John Cena. Um, but the most recent one, which really just made me like literally be like, okay, oh, yeah, guys. It was um 2017, and it was uh the United Kingdom tournament, mm. and um the dude that won that was Tyler Bate. I'm like, bro, this kid, he's 19 years old. I am 15 years old. He's the a fact monster. that he's 19 years old, and he. Just became a champion in the WWE. The first of them. It, was, it was him and uh the bruiser. Yeah, Pete Dunn. Pete, yeah, that was a crazy match. It was all like bro, he's 19 and he's doing this like like I had no excuse. Like because from seven to about that time I was just wrestling my pillow. I'm like, I want to I want to do this. But then that just solidified. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go train. I'm gonna do this. You ain't never too young to begin, right? Never too young to start. And I full set it, and now that's where we are right now. Damn. All right, Nick. What about you, bro? Um. So it, I'm gonna take you back to 2016, man. I was um making a transition from Houston and moving to Orlando for a scholarship I had a full sale in, in science mm -hmm. uh, and marketing. So um. First day, I'm a wrestling fan, so when I first came out there, I found out they were doing the NXT tapes at Full Sail. But before that, uh, same month I came out here, they was having the Royal Rumble at the Amway Center. So while when I'm on, while I, when I was doing my assignment, I, you know what I'm saying I had opened up another tab. I looked at the tickets for the Amway show for the Royal Rumble 2016. So I was able to get one for the low. I went up, it was in the nosebleeds, whatever. So I was able to get one for the low. That Sunday I went. By myself, don't need to be at one deep. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm a natural wrestling fan. To take a girl over there, she, she's not really gonna enjoy it. Get up and do all this other stuff. So, um, I get there, man, and they started off the show hot. Man, tell me why it was a pre-show. What is the pay-per-view? The Usos fall off against the return of New Age Outlaws for the, the Raw. Uh, well, I just want to say the Unified Tag Team Titles. And, uh, the crowd and the energy was just spectacular, man. The Usos went up in there. And they did they work with the New Age Outlaws and, and God forbid no telling how long they was away from the ring, but they made them look smooth and look flawless. So they started off the show right with that because the Usos beat them to win their first ever. Well, I think well, actually they, it was a good match, but it went a DQ. They hmm. saved the 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 time when the Usos uh, the New Age Outlaws put over the Usos on Raw the next night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's when they beat them for the, the first for them to win their first tag team title. But later that night, the Royal Rumble, it was the first ever, I think, well, one of the many Royal Rumbles where they had the WWE title on the line. Yep. They had Roman started. But at number three, I was a fan mm -hmm. of his from, from day one. I remember. And I didn't know it. I wasn't on the internet or nothing. But I saw that his name hit the screen, and I popped just as big as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, AJ's here at WWE. So... No, that's what really made me want to really pursue it. Because if, if I'm in Florida, who else is in Florida? The Lee's in Florida, and in Florida. 
performance centers in Florida. If I can find a way, and I'm at that, and I'm at full self, I can find a way to graduate full self and start working with the lead, I'll be right there working with AJ Styles. Simple as that. The greatness Simple personified. That. Yeah. Right. That was it. All right, Malik. All right, so mine, I just. I'll just tell you what led me into looking for the rest of the year, going to school. I've always been a fan since I was younger, watched with my father, you know, grew up with the boys wrestling and everything else, you know, mm-hmm. but never really said, hey, let me look for a wrestling school, you know. Um, so, as a, I think it's 2017, so I had one of my shoots. I'm, I'm working, I'm working, and the first person, and, so, and who comes in first? It's uh, Sean Spears. Oh, he comes shit. in my he comes in my and, and he comes into my shoe first, right? And I'm looking I'm like, oh snap, like yo, Ty Dillinger, like yo, perfect ten, like mm-hmm. I see your team, you know what I'm saying? So you know, you know, and not to sound like you know a big fan, but I was Stargate, like dang, you know, a wrestler. Um, and then at the same shoe, um, uh, Scott Dawson, I don't know his age, but he goes by now A and A W. What are you about? Yeah. Dax, Dax, Dax Harwood. Dax Harwood, yeah. Yeah, he came, he came into my shoot also. I was like, oh, snap. Scott Dawson. Okay. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, wow. So then um, I had another shoot while I was working as a bouncer at a security club downtown Orlando. And one day, Mojo Raleigh comes in. I'm just like, okay. So, you know, someone in the universe is telling me something. Mm-hmm. I've just seen too many records <laughs> as of lately, you know? So then at my, at the, at my original shoot, one day, so like this is this person did it for me. Oscar comes in, but she, but you cannot tell who she. Is. I'm talking about she is K babe. Like she, you cannot tell who she is. And she and I'm like, I love her. and I kind of answer her name. And she's like, and she smiled a little bit. I'm like, oh snap! You know, I want to put on blast. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey. So then, you know, I, I asked for a picture also. And after that, and that was in January 2018. I was like, Yo, I'm, I'm looking for a wrestling school, and I just. And um, you know, I found one, and um, it took off from there. You know, so it was me actually meeting wrestlers is like, oh snap! Like because the thing is like, I look at them like, oh wow, you know, and I'm like, well, I wouldn't mind me being looked at like that also at some point when I walk into places, you know. And that's just uh, honest truth. So yeah, that's what my driving force is going to wrestling. Plus, besides, I love it. It's a piggyback off of that what he said. That turning, that turning point to make you want to look at the wrestling school. Like I said, after that rumble, I went to NXT, got the last ticket, right? So I guess I was just fake. Got the last ticket, went up in there, we did our thing. And then I looked up some wrestling schools afterwards. First one I saw was 2.0 because they was advertising uh, the seminar they was doing with uh, the Tessa, Tessa Blanchard. Mm-hmm. I go up in there, Malik up in there, we hit it off, we meet. So we, we established a relationship first and then like to piggyback on what Eli said uh two or three months later here comes this skinny lanky ball headed <laughs> athletic say, though. athletic I want to say maybe a lot of people are like oh he's gonna be the one to go against you go CDE and you see this you see, you see, they, they call me many yes they call him by many Malik you know what I'm saying because I'm like <laughs> he's his own person you know like right like, but, I, but to be open I never really saw it like as a I was like, okay, I tagged him. I was like, okay, like, damn, like, little dude got moves. Like, shoot, like, you know what I'm saying? As when we got put together through Savio Vega, I was like, <laughs> this makes sense. Mm. This just makes sense. Frog, just a, to work as a team, you know? So, yeah. There's a common thread in all of your stories where the universe moved and guided things to bring – you know, that confirmation you guys needed. And the way you guys met lets me know that this was on purpose. This this was yeah. supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? So that's everything. To get confirmation personally, you know, it may not show to everybody else, but when you know it within yourself, that's that's the, all the vindication you need, honestly. That's, that's, that's everything. So I want to say... Kudos to you guys, because I often say the hardest thing to do is to follow your heart is also the scariest. So yeah. the fact to see three black men successfully chasing their dream is everything. And, and that's why I definitely reached out to you guys, um, because the crazy thing is 
I've interviewed a few other wrestlers and they pointed me in your direction. It was like, yo, we mess with them heavy. Go check them out next. I mm. kid you not. I'm not going to say who, but that's how I came across your information. Oh, I appreciate so, it. Tell them we appreciate Tell them it. Respect. 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 The crazy thing is they're in a completely different region of the United States. So I wanted to give you guys that bit of information so people have eyes on you when you don't know it. So I just wanted to give you those flowers. Now, I told y'all I wasn't going to be long now, so I'm, I'm going to wrap my shit up and get ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to end with this question for you guys. So uh, it's, it's my dream match question. You knew it was coming because I told you. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> if, you could, if, if you could have any program with any stable, past or present, who would you choose? Mm. Let's see, I'm gonna just kick this off with Memory. Why me first? Well, I got you. So I'm gonna kick you off with that. So, man, um, I got, I got, I got, I got to take it to the, to the current WWE product right now, and I'm gonna take it to OG, who whose backyard we're in doing these uh, tapings for oh, Fight Evolution yeah. Wrestling. I'm gonna have to take it to Mr. 305 MVP and what he's doing with the hurt business. The hurt yeah. business is I'm, the thing, I'm, bro. I'm gonna have to take it with him. I, uh, I would most uh, want. That's a dream program for me. Mouthpiece against mouthpiece for the most part is what he says he is, but he's also doing other stuff which I really would uh, commend. But I was I could see a program with me, uh, the Hurt Business versus Coach Nick, Mike to Mike with MVP, Malik Bo City going head on with the muscle. their powerhouses and lastly, or you know what I'm saying, taking the show yeah. Benjamin. I'd rather say to <laughs> and then I can see, yeah, and then I can see, I can see us taking last on the handicap match. You know what I'm saying? I can, yeah. I can take that. And I can also see the magic him and Sick. the person that we that we trained with and actually came to 2.0 and grace us with some knowledge and, and did some rest with us, Cedric Alexander. I can see him and Eli Knight putting on magic, magic, magic. I'm gonna say for me in that group, it would be Shelton or MVP, definitely Bobby Lashley. But I mean, obviously, I'm not in a powerhouse division, not taking away from MVP or Shelton now, but they're in different lanes. Yeah, right. But Shelton had one of the most purest athletic athletes to ever cross it be period. So I would definitely love to test it against him. And then technician wise and just like working wise, MVP of course. Mm -hmm. And if I want to go in speed wise, Cedric. Right. They they work, but they all have a you know what I'm saying, that fits together. So going against a hurt vision, hell yeah. Like that for me that that'd be a two thumbs up quick. Yeah. You no, know, I'll throw Harlem Heat in there too for old school Ooh. tags now. Now, yeah, now, now we go. Now you click it. Now we click it. For a past rematch, he says Harlem Heat. I said Crime Time. Uh, um, rest in oh, peace. Oh, man, rest in peace, Shad. Yeah. Yeah, rest, rest in power, peace, Shad. Shad. Mm -hmm. That I can see us working magic with them. You know, you saw they like to hit you know, the little licks in the back in the backstage here. You saw when they stole leader stuff and they was auctioning it. <laughs> I can see us doing the same kind of games with them. They was auctioning off Royal Rumble numbers to some of the guys in the back. I remember that. Shad was. They finessed Eugene out his all his money, so. I can see us doing the same thing, doing the program with them. So, all right, Eli, pressure's on, bro. A lot of stable. See, it is. I I would say I was not gonna say it for you, but also just just for experience wise, also, I would say evolution. Mm. But if you think about it, they had all that generation. All we are just missing one, but you have Ric Flair as the boom, you know what I'm saying? Now was the, the wisdom, now was the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Not comparing myself to Flair, but obviously, you know what I'm saying? Right. That'd be the role I was somewhat to fill. You know what I'm saying? Well, you're not a, you know, you're not a wrestler, but like Eli would be Randy Orton, the future, you know what I'm saying? And then we have. You would be the, you be Triple H, but you always like to think and be cerebral and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he always developing the master plans. The tactician. The we just need a Batista, you know, the bigger one. That's yeah. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. So I would say evolution on that, just from those those stats. You know what I'm saying? But like you like said, in this, the, 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 the world of preservation right now, there's a lot of black ass in the out there. So we're like, I like to take a little shot at some of the other ones, you know what I'm saying? A little promo. I like, I can see us working a promo with these guys, but like I told them in one of our old interviews, we don't have to profit off the streets saying we want the smoke. Okay, we don't, we don't, we don't have to do that. Okay, we already woke. 
every t- everywhere we go, the city know they woke as well. They lit, and like I said, if we was to ever throw a party, it wouldn't nothing be private about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It'll, it'll, it'll be it'll be live at five with everybody in the city. You know what I'm saying? But the culture, everybody come down and turn up. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey, mm-hmm. I, hey, look, I appreciate you writing checks that I feel you can cash, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel, you know, hey, hey, I like it. I like it. Big pockets. <laughs> word, word. Make the shit happen. Somebody. Tony Khan, somebody. Shit, make it happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> gentlemen, if anybody wanted to follow Culture Inc., how could they follow Uh, So you can follow Culture Inc. on Instagram, of course. Uh, that's Culture Inc. with two eyes on the ink. Uh, we got we got a business page on Facebook, Culture Inc. Uh, and then we got a Facebook fan page, Culture Inc. with two eyes on the ink. Uh, we also trying to build up our Twitter. If y'all can help us out with that, follow us on uh, Twitter, um, Culture Inc. Two eyes on the ink. Um, also, Pro Wrestling Tees. We, we got merch on there, man. Uh, mm. Culture Inc. If y'all, you know, what I'm saying y'all, y'all follow us. Be a part of the culture, man. Uh, go ahead and cop one of them culture f and tees, culture f and hoodies, on um, what a maneuver, um, everything. We got a we got a YouTube page coming up. Uh, that's all. That's all our social media formats right there. But you can also follow uh, Malik's Bo City Instagram. You can tell them uh, uh, Malik Bo City on Facebook, MB Integrator on Instagram and Twitter, and on YouTube. Malik Bo City. And I'm. Uh, Step up, please. Instagram, step up, please. Twitter, and Eli Knight on Facebook. I don't use Facebook because I'm not one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, watch your mouth. What, what is that supposed to be? Wow, watch your mouth. That's the disrespect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even know the, the outstanding pour on Facebook that came to this man when he made his 205 live debut. All the love on Facebook was there. And mm. also, when he made his debut on Raw for his birthday, he was on Raw Underground. All the all the love for Facebook came in, and they, they show love to them. Off of Coach, you better get on Facebook. Hey man, I'll say this, young man. I'll say this: it's a great tool for networking. Thank you. It is definitely. All right, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for me, it's just Nick J Holiday all together, and I see K J, and then the word Holiday at the end of it. H O L I D A Y. Nick J Holiday all together. That's on uh, Instagram. That's on my Facebook, and that's on my that's on my Twitter. All right. Look, gentlemen, I appreciate you, again, taking time out of your day. I appreciate the conversation. I think it's important that we show our culture. See what I did there? Yeah, like my man woke. Like, my man woke. You know? Yeah. So that being said, this has been your boy, sir, the 2020 Podcast, LLC, Culture F&E. You know what it is. You know it. You, you know, know what it is. And do not forget that LLC on that name. Don't forget no, the LLC. It. No, we got it. And for everybody listening, stay woke. Because the future is ours. Beware the coach.